welcome back to Food Plus Freedom. Today I'm going to show you how I store my wheat berries. Wheat berries is what you grind into flour. We buy our wheat berries local, and I say quote unquote local. We try to do everything as local as possible. But where I live, they don't grow wheat berries, but they do two and a half hours away. And we get them from a company that has farmers that work for them and they get all their wheat berries from that area. I have used many different types of wheat berries over the years, depending on what state we've lived in and what area. Where we live right now, it's Renan, Felt, Fredericks, Icorn. Those are the four that I purchased. Uh, Icorn is a new berry to us, and we're really excited about learning to bake with it, because what I have done, it does not bake the same. And we will do a complete series on just icorn wheat and how to bake with it. But today, I'm just going to show you how we do our storage for our wheat. A quick story for you. And yes, it's about wheat. About 25 years ago, we bought a house in the state of Washington. Before the old people moved out, the lady asked me, would you like some buckets of wheat? They were doing, they were preppers. They had tons of stuff. And I was like, yeah, sure. I was baking bread from scratch, but I hadn't started grinding my own wheat yet. It was something that was on my list to do soon. So I said, sure, I'll take the wheat. And she said, well, there's something you need to know about the wheat. Uh, I'm not sure how old it is. Uh, I found it in the back room and it's probably about 20 years old already, but wheat doesn't go bad and they've been stored really well. I found them when we were getting ready to move and we moved them up with us from California when we were transferred and they were now retiring and moving back to uh, California, but it was just the two of them and they didn't want to take all these weeds. I believe I got about 10 buckets of them and that is where my journey started, but that's not where the story ends. So that wheat moved to several other states with us and I started grinding it and I started learning all about wheat and different grinders and they had several different grinders and somehow a couple buckets got pushed in the back. So when I moved to our current house, which was almost 20 years ago, two of those buckets of wheat came with me. But when we moved in and all the chaos of everything, those two buckets of wheat got pushed back into a closet and forgotten about. Now I continued making bread and doing different things for canning and preserving, but the wheat was forgotten about. Well, about 10 years ago, I started cleaning out different rooms because kids were shifting, they were growing up, they were moving out. And I found these two buckets of wheat. I thought, this is great. When I pulled the two buckets of wheat out, I noticed one was sealed really, really well. And I thought, that's going to be cool. And I saw one that was sealed, but I could tell it probably wasn't sealed properly. And I was kind of scared what was going to be inside. The one that had been stored really, really well, and this wheat by this time is probably about 30 years old, if not older. I pulled off the top of the bucket that had been sealed correctly, and it was beautiful wheat. I ground it, we used it. I pulled off the other one, and as I opened it, I heard put the lid back on, and I tipped it sideways just a little bit, and all these bugs that were about that big, they were brown, and they looked like triangles, and they were hard-shelled, were crawling all over the wheat. Yeah, it was kind of gross. I mean, they weren't even larvas. They were like a full colony in there. I took this, and they're five-gallon buckets. I took the five-gallon bucket, and I took it to the chickens, and I dumped it out all over the place. And yes, there was more wheat than bugs in there, but the chickens didn't even go after the wheat. They went straight for all the bugs. It was kind of gross, but I learned something very, very valuable. And however we seal our wheat, is what's going to determine how well it keeps. Remember, all wheat products have bugs in them. They need oxygen to grow. 
And if we keep the oxygen out and we keep it stored correctly, it's going to last forever. So now, so that you don't get bugs in your wheat, let me show you how I store most of my wheat berries. These are the supplies that I use. I have buckets and I have two types. One type, it has this thing called a gamma lid and it seals and it comes off. When I put it back on, it seals back on. The other kind, and these, if you have somebody who works in the restaurant industry and they can get them for you, that's even better. These pop off. There's an area that here that when they're brand new, you actually have to pop this off and spin it around. But you can reuse the lid like this. You can use a mallet. I just press on it and you'll hear it snap. I'm not gonna snap all the way around, but and that snap down. I also need bay leaves because I put bay leaves in almost everything for storage. It's supposed to be great for bugs. I've had excellent, excellent success with using bay leaves. And then you have your wheat. I get mine in 50 pound bags. So we're just going to do one 50 pound bag. And we're going to get it poured in here, hopefully without making too much of a mess. Now, I've really been trying to get away from plastic. You can either use a cotton pillowcase, and they fit all the way down in really nice, so you can fill the whole thing up, or I made some, and they're not pillowcases, they're just sacks. Either way. So they fit in. Now, I just started using the fabric liners inside, which means I have only used them for about a year now. So I don't have 10 or 20 years worth of, did this work really well? So far, they're working well. But my idea is, is I don't want my food touching plastic if I don't have to. I'm trying to get away from plastic. But I have not figured out a better way to store my wheat berries. Yes, I can use mylar, but mylar is lined with plastic as well. We're trying to get the air out of these buckets. One of the easiest ways to get the air out of these buckets is to have them as full as possible. You don't get as much in the bucket when you use cloth. So you, you can still use them. You can still use your buckets without your cloth if you don't worry about the plastic. I still do have some that are straight into the bucket because I don't have enough of these made. They're easy to make. If you're interested on how to do a little sewing, drop that in the comments for what kind of sewing you want to learn. And maybe this winter we'll do some sewing. So the first thing I do is I put this in here and I push it all the way down because I want it in all the corners. I buy bulk bay leaves. I do get them from Frontier Co-op so they're organic. This is a pound. This is a lot. And what I do is, and I probably go overboard on the bay leaves, I put a couple bay leaves on the bottom so they're just in the bottom of the bucket. Now it's time to pour. If you have more than one person doing this, it's a lot easier. You can get bags of wheat berries in less than 50 pounds. That's just the cheapest way to get it. We pull off the top, and then we have to pour it in there. If you can't lift it and pour it, because it's kind of wobbly, what I do is I take one of the other buckets. That's if I don't get my husband to help. And I set it on the bucket. I slide it back. And I tip it. The goal is to get the wheat berries into the bucket with the minimal amount of berries onto the floor. Easier said than done sometimes, but this time I did a pretty good job because most of the wheat berries are in the bucket and I don't see many on the floor at all. Once you fill up the bucket as far as you think you can, shake the bucket side to side, pull up the sides of the cloth 
so that it's all going down into the bucket as thick as possible. Now you want to make sure that you fill it as full as you can so you have less air. The lids that come with the buckets are thinner than the gamma spin-on ones. There's about a half an inch to an inch difference between the two. So it's you can fill more in with the green top and they come in different tops. Except when you're using the fabric inside, it's really harder to see. You just have to keep shaking the wheat berries down, pulling the fabric up and adding until it is completely filled to the top. If you want to, you can use oxygen absorbers inside as well. In these size of bucket, you're gonna need two large, they're like, I think 5,000 cc's to be put in here. I'm not going to use them, the sweet is being used very quickly. And then I take some more bay leaves. No, you don't need as many as I'm putting in. Probably about three or four. So I pull all of this up so that it's pushed down as much as possible. And then I take all my ends, I tie it up. You don't have to tie them. I'm just doing that for the not to hit, touch the plastic. Now, you may look, yeah, there's there's area that air can be in here. With these, it's harder to tell if you have, with the green, well, they could be any color. But with the ones that you reuse, it's really hard to tell if you could have put more in when you're using the bag. When I don't use the bag, I fill it all the way up and I swish it down, which means less air. And then I just smack it on there. Now, what I told you about where these weren't sealed down, these parts on the sides here have to be all the way flat. And I'm looking. This one here is not all the way flat, and this one isn't here. So I will have to take a rubber mallet and seal it down. And nope, I don't have the rubber mallet here because it's out on a fence someplace from when we were building the fence the other day. So that's how I store my wheat. And then this whole five gallon bucket gets stored in a cool, dry area with all the rest of them. Once you have your bucket sealed, you want to make sure you write on it when you, when you packaged it. Every single bag that you get of wheat berries should tell you two things. One, the year it was grown and the date it was packaged. There's these little tags that are on ours, and this one says it was 2023 is the year it was grown, pack 71024. So it was either packed for us before we got it, and they're just in great big bins, or we got lucky. Now, for 2023 grow, because this felt is grown winter, meaning it's planted in the fall and it's harvested in the spring. And they always go by the date that it was planted for the growing season. So I know this is pretty fresh. I have gotten some wheat where it said that it was like two years ago when it was grown. And I've called and said, well, why? And they said, well, we just had an abundance that year that we're still going through it. And this last year we didn't grow anything, which is typical. If they have an abundance, they're not going to grow as much. But you want to have those two information so you know how old your wheat is. Now, once we have this all set it goes into a dry dark area and marked and then we rotate it through making flour i hope you got something from this video on how you can store wheat berries long term and short term and what you're looking for for storing them plus know that by storing them correctly they're never going to go bad and if you store them incorrectly they're really good chicken food bugs and protein included on that one but thanks for watching. Make sure you head over to our website at foodplusfreedom.com where we have a lot more videos and articles on homesteading, gardening, and everything in between to be prepared for your food for today and tomorrow. Remember, whoever owns your food owns you. So grow food, buy local, 
and be the he healthiest, happiest homesteading you. Until next time, we'll see ya.